Mr. Sylvain, I need you to tell me everything you and your brother did since yesterday afternoon. Did you see or hear anything strange? After Kyria attacked Edgar, my brother and I were incredibly careful. We returned to our rooms and decided to lock all the doors leading to the hallway. The only door we kept unlocked was the one connecting our rooms. That way, if we heard any commotion coming from the other room, we could help each other. But I didn't hear any sort of commotion last night. Not a single noise! I woke up this morning, opened the door, and... Lucian... Lucian was... So, no movement from the room next door. No forced entry via Sylvain's room. No signs of a struggle at the scene. And no external injury on Lucian's body. What kind of cause of death are we dealing with here? I did notice a few things about the body. Lucian's pupils were dilated and his skin was flushed. Very similar to Master's symptoms after the attack yesterday. There weren't any traces of liquid in his mouth or nose, so it's unlikely he was forced to ingest anything. The more plausible explanation is that he inhaled a substance without knowing it. And I'd say that substance was likely a goose. A goose? No, that's not possible. In inhaling, a goose won't kill you. And anyway, it, it would have been for just one night. No, that's not what I meant. Emily, you ran your tests, didn't you? Go on, tell everyone whether you found any poison. No, I didn't find any common toxins. <laughs> See? A ghost is harmless. The market response proved that years ago. That may be true for most people, but not for everyone. Master! Edgar? You're up and about already? <coughs> Thanks to Emily. I'm out of the woods for now. Sylvain, no matter how hard you may try to hide it, the truth will always come to light. Edgar! Even if we could keep it a secret for another ten or twenty years, do you think Kyria would just let us be? No. He would never give up. Not if he's doing all of this for Yelena. <sighs> That's Vijava's real name. Yelena wasn't a scholar from Sumeru. She was an exiled Fatus from Snezhnaya. A Fatus? The Fatui. <gasps> well, that means the elemental energy present Nagust was... Ah, so you've already detected it. <sighs> Well, Sylvain, looks like there's truly no reason to hide things now. Oh. The August Flower was created with the mutative and distorting power of a delusion. A... Uh, a delusion? The Fatui, delusions... I never would have thought a ghost was hiding this many secrets. Born of a delusion, Auguste contained distorted elemental energy. A prolonged exposure over many years could have a harmful effect on the body. <laughs> That's enough, Edgar. I'll take it from here. At first, Yelena wanted to keep refining the perfume and the flower. But no one knew how long the perfume mania was going to last back then. It didn't have any effect on ordinary people anyway. Every day we postponed going to market was another day of lost earning potential. So you decided poisoning people was worth the risk? Listen, it's not like it was good for business. 
But all that talk about a goose being harmful over time... Yelena was just speculating. The impact was practically negligible. Unless you were particularly sensitive to elemental energy or had an entire bottle shoved down your throat like Edgar, you could use the product for decades and be completely fine. It may be true there are no records of a goose poisoning in Fontaine, but even if no one was acutely poisoned, willfully bringing a product to market despite explicit knowledge of its harmful effects is still a serious crime. <laughs> that explains why you were so intent on keeping Yelena and Kyria's involvement a secret all this time, despite readily confessing to all your financial crimes. The Fatui, delusions, a goose. If the Marochese Phantom discovered the connection between the three, there would have been enough evidence to send you to the Fortress of Meripede for life. Ha! <laughs> If I'd known coming to Sumeru would put a target on my back, I would have been more than happy to stay there. <laughs> At least that way, Lucian would still be alive. <sighs> oh, these years without any sign of Kyria, and he pops up out of nowhere the minute my brother and I get out of prison? It couldn't be any clearer who the kid's after. A ghost was harmless before. The fact that it's killing people all of a sudden must be his doing as well. So there's bad blood between you. What about Yelena's death? Was that a cover-up too? A way to destroy evidence? I'll admit, we thought about it at one point. We took care to disguise the product circulating on the market, and no one was questioning Yelena's fake identity. But... If the Mara Chausse Phantom decided to look into the flower beds, it would have been the end. Yelena's ties to the Fatui, the role of the delusion, everything would have been exposed. Before we could even put our plan in motion, Yelena beat us to it. She burned all her flower beds and threw herself into the fire as well. But. but if her goal was to destroy evidence, there would have been no reason to do that to herself. Yeah, she could have just burned the flower beds and fled with her brother. I thought about it for a long time, but it wasn't until just now that I finally understood her reasoning. Everything she did, it was for her brother, Kyria. <sighs> One of the reasons they defected from the Fatui was the deterioration of Yelena's body due to her excessive use of a delusion. She didn't want her brother to follow in her footsteps after her death. After arriving in Fontaine, Yelena continued using the delusion to cultivate the Auguste flower, weakening her body even further. There were times when she couldn't even walk. So, she couldn't flee with her brother because she was afraid of holding him back. If her true identity was exposed, she and her brother would face pressure from both Snezhnaya and Fontaine. The Auguste flower and Yelena's own corroded body both bore the mark of a delusion. There would have been no way to avoid suspicion. So, in the end, she burnt it all to ash, including herself. With all the evidence erased, Kyria was free to take the Mora and run. So the wealth you earned from a goose, it wasn't destroyed in the fire. Yelena gave it to her brother? Most likely. Before Yelena died, she said if anything happened to her, she was going to leave everything to her brother. We just didn't realize she meant our cut as well. That's why Lucian and I were searching for Kyria, to take back our Mora and the Auguste flower. We just didn't realize Kyria was baiting us the whole time. It was all a trap. <laughs> but why is Kyria out for revenge anyway? Doesn't he know about Yelena's decision to sacrifice herself? 
I don't think he knew his sister was nearing death. Elena always wore heavy makeup around him to conceal her deteriorating appearance. She kept herself busy with work to keep out of sight. That way her brother wouldn't notice how she could barely walk. Then all I'll need to do is tell Kiria what really happened and then I'll give up on his revenge. I'm not so sure. Even if he knew the truth, he'd still find someone to blame. He might think Yelena was forced into using a delusion to cultivate a ghost, or something like that. It's hard to pull yourself out of that kind of hatred, especially when you've been living in that headspace for so many years. Very true. Even if Yelena's death was her own choice, I wouldn't call myself innocent either. <laughs> Edgar! What are you talking about? Think about it, Sylvain. If we hadn't been in such a hurry to capitalize on the perfume mania all those years ago, do you think Yelena would have elected to take those risks? If we hadn't been so blinded by greed, so insistent on increasing the scale of the flower cultivation, do you think Yelena's health would have deteriorated as fast as it did? If we hadn't invited the Mara Chausse Phantom to our doorstep by breaking the law at every turn, Yelena could have survived. <laughs> she knew her limits. She knew her days were numbered. Maybe it was for her brother, but she was in it for the Mora just as much as us. We were just trying to earn a bit of Mora. And what, we deserve to die for that? Target me for being the mastermind, sure. But what about Lucian? He was just following my orders. Lucian's crime, was it really so extreme that he had to pay for it with his life? <sighs> the only person that can answer that question is a judge. <laughs> Fine. I've said my piece anyway. Drag me back to Fontaine to stand trial. I don't care. <sighs> Three people from Fontaine, one from Snezhnaya, and a crime committed in Port Ormos. What a headache. Well, we can only wait until the Academia sends someone to deal with it. I'm guessing we'll have to contact Fontaine as well. In any case, we won't really know anything until tomorrow. <sighs> with the exhibition, we don't even have space in Port Ormos to detain anyone. Such a headache. Hmm. The hotel could suffice. You could station a few officers to keep an eye on Sylvain and myself. Although with Sylvain's mental state and my physical one, I don't think you need to worry about a jailbreak. Mr. Edgar, are you saying... If Sylvain is to stand trial, then I deserve the same fate. A crime is a crime, accomplice or not. I'd just like to take care of a few things before I go. Uh, say goodbye to my plants and all that. As for Sylvain, I'm sure he also has some goodbyes of his own. <sighs> Would you be willing to grant that request, Sheriff? Well, all right. I'll talk to the Academia. No matter who you were in Fontaine or what crimes you committed, the man we grew to know in Sumeru proved himself to be a good person. Your request is granted. You have my thanks, Sheriff. Happened tonight? Oh, you mean the possibility that Kyria might try to finish what he started? Yeah, all we know is that he uses a goose to poison people, but we still have no idea how to catch him in the act. If he targets Sylvain or Edgar again, we might not be able to stab him. That may be true, but what if we can take advantage of his desperation? 
If we take advantage of this situation and lure him in on purpose, we might finally have the chance to talk to him. Master, no. That's too dangerous. <laughs> so, that's your plan. If Kyria learns we're being taken away tomorrow, his last chance to enact his revenge would be tonight. In other words, you want to use us as bait to capture him. Capture? Not necessarily. I just want to talk. What? Are you afraid of him? Afraid? <laughs> this is my only chance to make him pay for what he did. I'm spending the rest of my life in prison anyway. I can't just sit back and let him ride off into the sunset with our fortune. There's no way I'm letting him get away with it. Not after what he did to Lucian. <laughs> As for the danger, everyone else just needs to make preparations in advance to protect us. I'll admit, it could work. We just need to spread the word that Edgar and Sylvain are leaving tomorrow. Then I'll station some of my men around the hotel. If we have your assistance as well, our chance of success would be even higher. I still have some reservations. But if you insist on carrying out this plan, I won't deny you my help. I'll also keep watch. Although I think Sylvain and myself should remain alone in our respective rooms. If Kyria noticed another person in the room, he might decide to turn back. And besides, it's possible he's already transformed Auguste into a potent toxic gas. Uh, you mean if he doesn't see a way to get his hands on the two of you, he might get so desperate that he'll just start using Auguste on everybody? If that were to happen, everyone's standing guard. Even the innocent citizens in Port Ormos would all be in danger. That's why everyone else needs to keep to the shadows. <laughs> You're still recovering. You need to rest. <sighs> this old pack of bones doesn't bounce back like it used to. <sighs> I suppose I'll just have to leave the rest to you. All right. We can figure out a plan to keep watch later. Right now, I say we split up and start spreading that information before it's too late. 